Now, season preview, Michael. Mm. We continue, and right now we're talking about the New Zealand Warriors. If you have a look at last year, in many ways the, the honeymoon's over, isn't it, for the Warriors? Like you oh, know, yeah. they've been disrupted so much over the last three years. But but time to put up really fifteenth last year, six wins, eighteen losses in a clearly disappointing season. Have the Knights at home. Round one as their first clash. So just looking at the side, um, a lot of talk about who's there. Tamare Martin, Chance, Nickel Cookstar, Luke Metcalf, Murata Neacorde, uh, Mitch Barnett, Dylan Walker, yep. which is an interesting one. But no Eli Katoa, no Ben Murdoch Masilla, no Ewan Aitken, no Reese Walsh. It's an interesting season for the Warriors. I think they've gained more than they've lost. Reese Walsh is the obvious um, out there. Ewan Aitken was really good for him. Um, in, in, in 22, but I think the, their replacements, Murata Neokoro, Mitch Barnett, gives them a real hard edge to, to their forward pack. Um, so I like their signings. Dylan Walker showed at times at, at Manly how um, versatile and dangerous he can be coming off that interchange bench and playing in that middle third of the field, and that looks like that's going to be his role is that, with, is with that the a, Warriors. Is, yeah, right. Is that enough for Dylan Walker? Like, based on the way he did play, mm. you look at you look at – you know, what their side might look like. You go, oh, okay. And, and okay, if he's playing that role, what role Jazz Tavanga? Mm. Interesting. Like, like yeah. they're both 14s. They are. They are. Uh, but that's where they've signed. I spoke with Andrew Webster before Christmas. Right. And and that's, you know, he, he's still got to work through a lot of things. All the uh, World Cup players went back yet and, and the like. But that's where he's got him earmarked for. He might have to play, fill in in, in the centres or what, depending on injuries and the like, but looks like he's going to be, have that roving commission role again. Okay. Uh, look at the spine. Tamare Martin or Chance Nickel Cookstar? I think Chance will start at fullback. At the back, Luke Metcalf, Sean Johnson, mm. Wade Egan. Mm. Uh, Taniela Otacolo is a player on the rise, okay? Future Kiwi hooker on that one. They've got the young guns coming through, and that's obvious with that. That big uh, base that they have there, uh, Valinga, Kepu, and Otu Kinakina Kepu, from all reports, are young players that have huge futures. So that's a bit of the, the scouting report on that one. Torhu Harris, we know, has been a beacon over the course of this yeah. time. So too, Adam Fanua Blake. But yeah. I, I had real issues last year, um, Mick, with Sean Johnson. You there, weren't the only one. Right. There were some games where he, he just... You know, we had Gus Gould used to say they've lost all desire for physical contact, mm. and I reckon that happened 18 months ago for Sean. I think it happened at Cronulla, yeah. Yeah. I, I really do, and you speak to people at Cronulla, and I think they felt that. Yep. Um, if there wasn't a change of coach, Sean Johnson would not be at the Warriors this year. Right. So I, I think Nathan Brown had seen the signs that um, – They were impossible to miss. Mm. You could, I, I, I could watch it and go, go, he doesn't take the line on. Yeah. And one of the first conversations Andrew Webster had was with Sean Johnson, picked up the phone and said, mate, are you in? Do you want to be in? Are you committed? And, and Sean gave every indication that he that he is. The comfort of being at home for him is huge as well because he was away from his wife and, and his young child. That's right, yes. So he, he, he yes. was doing that and, and he struggled, no doubt, and like a lot of the Warriors players, but Sean struggled with that. So the yes. comforts of, of being back at home, he hasn't been at home for years because yep. he had that stint at Cronulla. Yes. Um, so he's back there, he's comfortable, and they hope that will be enough to reignite him for one last season. If not, they do have that cover. They've got young Volkman, they've got Metcalf, they've yes. got Samari Martin, who can play in the halves as well. Yes. If, if needed. So um, if, you, if you're Andrew Webster, uh, and, and that sounds like – so. Every everything I hear about Andrew Webster is that he's an NRL coach mm. in waiting, right? Yep. And now now he gets that opportunity. So well done to him on that. The challenge around that is that you've got all this other stuff that goes on that's completely unrelated to coaching, yep. right? You've got to manage internal stakeholders. You've got to manage the external stakeholders, and and that's that's the skill that the long term coaches have mm. developed. They either have it or develop it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where the challenge lies for Andrew Webster. But if you're staking your uh, you know, you want to die on that hill, as James Graham would say. It's with Sean Johnson. Wow, I'm glad he set some parameters and said, "Righto, mate, this is this is what am I expecting he, of you?" And if you don't do that, see you later. And he's such a controlling personality, Sean Johnson. Such a dominant personality that it, it could be easy for him to swallow up a rookie coach. Yep, 
So and because he's a star. He's a he's, former star. Yeah. And, he's a former Golden Boot winner. And if you look at that Warriors outfit, he's still the genuine star power off the field for that club. Right. Yep. There's no Roger Tulvasa check now. No. So outside of that, who who are you saying is going to put bums on seats? It's still Sean Johnson. So he definitely has value from that point of view for the club. He's very marketable still, clean cut, but he needs to perform on the field. Just on Andrew Webster, he did have a taste of it at the Tigers. Yes. Where he, he was in charge for a couple of games, but that was... Uh, Doesn't count. It was a bushfire there, though. There was yeah. lots going on in and around him that in the Sydney media landscape as well and everything that was going on that opened his eyes and goes, wow, this is what it takes now. So I think that, albeit right. brief, yes. introduction allowed him to dip his toe in to go, these are, the, these are the tools that I need to have to be able to handle it. And it's a lot different over there in New Zealand, right? Everyone likes the Warriors. The yeah. Warriors are everyone's side. You know, if the All Blacks are losing, wow, that's a mm. problem. But if the Warriors are losing, it's like, oh, come on, guys. Well, uh, Expected of it, yeah, a little bit too. That's you know? right. So, that's right. But that's that's the challenge. That's I, the challenge. I think they've got a better balanced roster heading into next season. Okay, I'm not convinced of that. Um, where do you have them finishing? Bottom of the near the bottom of the ladder. So fifteenth last year. I've got them thirteenth. Yeah, I, I think that's probably fair around there. Uh, we'll see how that plays out.